Hi, this video is a follow-up to the session on Moodle that I gave at the ETI Summer Conference in Jerusalem, July 10th, 2013, and also a follow-up to the article that will eventually appear in the ETI Forum very soon, sometime in October or November. If you are not members of ETI yet, I say join us. Well, um, since I'm going to be talking about the flipped classroom using Moodle at Google, I'm going to start by thanking you for your time. Welcome then to my Moodle at Google. The idea for this video came up when I prepared something in Hebrew for the Moodle Mashov the Google course, a course that I'm giving for teachers or two teachers at Google High School. It's entirely in Hebrew, as you can see here. And you can see now the course from the perspective of a teacher. You notice that some of the things are blue. That means that students, in this case teachers, can see them, whereas others are gray. That means that they can't see it. So that you get an idea of what I'm talking about, I'll turn to uh, look at this from the point of view of a pupil. And you will notice that we don't have as many things as you could see before. Since I'm going to be talking about something that I prepared for my English and Spanish classes, I have decided to turn to English once again. So look, we are here. This is my home. These are my courses. The, the site we're going to have a look at is the Moodle for English 5 points. You that left 5 and 8, that is to say 11th and 12th grade 5 points. This is the course, once again, you can see some of the things in blue, that means that pupils can see them, and others are in gray, such as this one, which means that my pupils cannot see them. I'm going to show you how I will use something in a, along the lines of the flipped classroom, and how I am going to be teaching or reviewing something with my students without doing this in class, and expecting them to do the work at home so that we can later talk about it in class. Once again, look at the fact that here you see some things that are in gray. I'm going to show you how my pupils can see this nowadays. So I'm going to switch role to pupils and notice that a lot of things are not available for them to see yet, even though I have already prepared them. Well, I've gone back to my normal role as a teacher, see that everything is clear because I have not turned on the, edit the editor yet. I will in a moment so that you can see the difference once again. Notice that I'm trying to use this not just as a recipient of information, but also as a place where my students can, I should say must, uh, put in some work, introduce themselves and think things like this. I'm using a high point book. So I have already done something. You probably know know this if you teach uh, Udalif, and you may have used this um, book. You may have used this unit. Let me show you one thing that I did. like what you see when you look in the mirror? Well, this is one of my favorite poems called Fazaz by Carl Sandburg. This face you got, this here Fazaz you carry around. You never picked it out for yourself at all, at all, did you? This hmm, I'm drifting away. So you can see that in Moodle you can integrate a lot of things and use it together with the stuff that you use at school. But let's go then to how you can teach something without being together with your kids. That is to say, putting it on Moodle so that pupils study it or review it before they come to class. And then in class you can work on it. Well, in this case, I'm, getting, uh, I'm talking about get, getting pupils ready for the Module E exam, which I will take this year. I don't want to go on explaining again and again in class how they have to get ready for that and what they have to do. 
So I'm going to use something that other teachers have prepared, that the Ministry of Education has prepared. Notice once again, it's gray so that pupils cannot see it now. So the first thing that I'm going to be telling them to do is to download the Bagrut examination. By clicking here, they will simply get to a PDF in which there is the exam that I want them to do. You probably know this exam. Here it is. You have the entire text together with the questions and the listening comprehension questions as well. Now, I want the kids to know how to work with the exam and during the exam. I've told them, but I want them to have a look at it so beforehand. So I'm going to ask them to watch a video that you probably know. Hi, it's Adele again. Back with the dogs. This is Nikki. Now let's down there. And this time you're going to be working harder than me, which is what I really like as a teacher. So let's start. The first thing that you have to do is go to the website and download from 2006 winter, download the test, do the test on your own, and then come back and check us out for the answers. As you see, I have downloaded the exam. That is, I have put a link to the exam on this module, and I have also put a link, put a link to the listening comprehension text, so that pupils can listen to this and uh, do the exam. Or two, access to information from spoken text. <laughs> And as you notice, everything is on this Moodle site, so that I don't have to send kids to look for the stuff in different places. They have it all here together at the same time. Well, this use of the material is probably known to you, not very uh, new. So let me show you something different. I teach a special education class which I like very much. I like the kids very much and I want them to learn as much English as possible. Now learning English does not mean just putting a few words together or being able to decode a few words, but really speaking, listening, understanding as much as they can. There are kids in this group who may even write a Bagrut examination given the proper uh, a guidance, assistance, and that's what I'm going to be doing, I hope. But anyway, Moodle allows me to prepare staff on different levels and for uh, for different kids. Uh, notice again that this is great, which means that kids cannot see it yet. I have prepared a book. I'm using a 20 and since number one, but I think that there's the it will be a very good idea to have kids also see some of the things that they will read about. Remember, I'm talking about uh, different levels of kids. Here's a recording with pictures. That is to say, I have recorded the text. My pupils have bought the book, uh, but since some of them cannot decode, I have decided to read it to them using this program. Um, when they click on Vokaroo, they can listen to it. Now, they, I want them to see what uh, Golden Eagle is, so um, I have uh, placed a few short movies so that they can see them. This is one of them, for example. Now, as I said, since some of the kids have problems decoding, and I've been teaching this in class as well, I have prepared something that has to do with, with that. They can read it and practice it. They can practice the vocabulary of the text by having a look at some of the words. This is still very easy, but there are some things that are a bit more difficult. For example, once again, 
a good video that will show them a little bit about We're here with uh, Lloyd Black again he's brought one of the biggest, well, the biggest raptor yeah. Yeah. scary I know but it's not it's a beautiful beautiful video kids will remember what an eagle is of course notice that for kids who are a little bit more advanced and there are kids who are a little bit more advanced in this class I have put a link to an article and then some questions that have to do with that article here it is the article and uh, I mean to discuss with them in class. Kids work individually so there will be time and I will have the opportunity to talk to the kids hoping that uh, all of them will find something that is of interest and we learn some English. I have to try to make this interesting for them so you will see that some of them will have all the opportunity to share in a forum they will be able to watch some bird videos and even do the following task I've asked them to create a picture story using Google Drive I've taught these kids to work with Google Drive I teach Spanish five points of school too so I feel I must show you something that has to do with Spanish I am going to be asking my students to watch a short video and do some work with it so and this will be done in Tali on Moodle and in class I'm going to be talking about what they uh, did so they get a few instructions that you can see here then they get to watch the film that is a very uh, a short film a good one and everything that the characters say is written appears on the screen so that they can see they can listen and they can read at the same time <laughs> Scary. Now it's a love story, and I asked the pupils to watch and do some work with grammar that I've put there since Spanish has a problem with some of the letters when they have to type I'm asking kids to hand in this type of work uh, in class I'm not asking them to send them on Moodle as I can do with English so there's a review of grammar there's a little work with pictures so that I can test whether they remember what they have done notice that I can use also Google Drive to do that and so they can see I've integrated Google Drive into this you will notice in a moment here it is you can see it clearly now I then ask my pupils to do some reading comprehension work and hand it this is a book so next they can get their assignment the writing assignment and finally the credits that is to say here's all the material that I have used in order to create this exercise. My point then is that I can get my students to do a lot of things with Moodle and Moodle can do a lot of things for me. 
Thank you very much once again and see you. Bye.